most of these people that get into issues with weight and metabolic insufficiency, they have a much more difficult time controlling their appetite and don't some and don't realize that they're providing their body with an over surplus of nutrients and food. And they may even develop certain addictions, right? To sugar, to um, chocolate, initiating type of foods that, that they don't realize that what they've developed a behavior to. And I think that's where this all comes into an interesting place here. We can, if we look at it as when people get into these states of a nutrient surplus and and their eating habits change and they don't really see it, they don't realize it because it's become a behavior that they can't control. And, and in fact, um, it, it's, it's actually, it's signaled into the brain um, where these, uh, the, in specific in the hypothalamus and the POMC uh, neurons, it's, it's an area of where this signaling takes place to, um, to control basically appetite. And what happens is the behavior is set. And so what does that mean? It means not only is the, as the cell signaling changed um, based on what we would call an mTOR state, uh, where the cell is constantly activated and promoting this behavior, um, but it, it's also, uh, it, it's, in, it's setting off other pathways of um, influencing dopamine expression and dopamine for gratification for what they've, been done, what they've done. And that, that has to do with connections in the hypothalamus and, and so forth. And, 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 and so they're, they're in this pattern, basically. And so what, what's really interesting is, uh, and I, I, no, I started noticing through, uh, you know, before, before GLP-1s became a weekly um, a once a week thing. Uh, we were using GLP ones that we were dosing like twice a day. Some uh, then we got into the ones we were dosing every day, and that's kind of where we were in that phase of like using a lot of liraglutide, and we learned a lot um, years and years ago on these influences of where we could get people to this. So so when you introduce this. Um, uh, th this exogenous source of a GLP-1. And let's say we use some higher doses of it initially to, to what to influence that, that pathway in the brain to turn off the, the appetite. And basically what are we doing? We're changing the state of that cell. Um, we're, we're, we're taking that mTOR state and turning it off and creating an AMPK state. Um, AMPK being catabolism, um, mTOR being anabolism. And, and so it's a very, it's a, it's a switch that we're turning off that, is, that has, um, allows other cell signaling uh, processes to occur. And that, that has to do with the uh, melacortin uh, uh, receptor four and its influence on decreasing appetite. And, and so, what happens is the GLP-1 um, process kind of turns off that appetite-seeking behavior. And that allows, in combination with decreasing appetite, it allows also the metabolic aspects of, of what it does for efficiency, which we may get into or may not here, and what it does for the cell and improving fat oxidation, AMPK in the cell, the things that it does to improve efficiencies to utilize your own fat, improve the flexibility of the cell and the efficiency to start losing weight. Because what is losing weight? Losing weight is a side effect of cell efficiency. Mm -hmm. so, so that process begins and you get, you, you go through that time frame of getting that patient from whatever your desires are, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds, whatever it takes you can get your patients over time, and I express this very uh, passionately, it has to be over time. It can't be this fast process that so many people don't realize they're creating more problems with. Um, 
But you take your time with this many, many, many months up to a year, year and a half, whatever it takes, depending on the patient. And, you know, once you kind of reach those states, you can, you can, you can start backing down on this GLP-1. And, and what happens? So what happens is you have patients, this, and I learned this from my patients. This was incredible, actually, and then I can correlate it with the research. Um, I started seeing a certain subset of patients that were saying, hey, Dr. Seeds, you know, I, uh, I'm going down on my dosing, like you said, because there's so many other benefits, right, that these GLP-1s have with the immune system, with, with bone um, uh, uh, with uh, with uh, bone morphology and muscle activation and muscle growth and brain activity and you name it, kidney function. There's so many other things that the GOP1s play a really significant role in. And um, so patients, we typically will go down to this using a very small but effective dose that we feel we're making those strides with. And when those patients start backing down, so we got some of our patients that were saying, hey, you know, I had this desire to want to start eating. You know, I, I thought, oh my gosh, here comes my appetite. How am I going to be able to handle this? And, and what we were learning were that the patients were teaching themselves new behaviors. They were, they were taking advantage and, and brilliant in their own accord, on their own accord, they were they were developing a new behavior saying, well, gosh, I recognize now that I'm hungry. I recognize that I could go eat this, but I'm going to choose not to. And the more they did that, the more it became a behavior. And I was like, holy cripes, this is amazing. These patients are actually now in control of something that before they had no control of. And in fact, that went a step further because our pa you had patients that were saying, well, gosh, if I can do this, maybe I can, you know, jump into a new hobby or maybe I can learn something new and retain it better. And so I started seeing some of these incredible changes where people took on new activities, new learning behaviors, and they were very successful. So then I took that to the next level of where I started working with my patients in training them that they had this capability. And that was the hardest part, was to learn the art of giving your patients that knowledge that, hey, guess what? You have this new capability that if you decide to take advantage of it, it's not easy. It's like anything you do, right? You go out and you lift weights. You want to get stronger. You want to get more performance oriented. It takes time. It takes work. It's You learn a new language. It takes work. You learn an instrument. It takes work. It's not easy. Well, it's just it's the same thing with learning a new behavior. Um, it, especially when you don't, when before that behavior became something automatically you couldn't control. Now they, I, it, it's the art of teaching that patient, hey, guess what? You have control of this. And this is, this is how I suggest you work through it. And it's building that behavior.